Thanks for listening today. Don't forget to subscribe and share this episode. My guest today is Brian Clayton, the co-founder at GreenPal. GreenPal is a mobile app and online freelancing platform for lawn care providers. Thanks for joining me today, Brian. John, thanks for having me on your show. Great to be here, buddy. So I know that you're in Mexico. The weather looks amazing back there. Um, how are you enjoying it so far? Man, it's awesome. Uh, that's one of the cool things about running an online business is that you can run it from anywhere with an internet connection. So I've been traveling down to Mexico for the last two or three weeks and, uh, and, and, and all over South America. So, you know, I, that's one of the things I love about running this company is that my team is all over the world so I can be anywhere in the world and travel is kind of a big passion of mine. That's amazing. So we already started because you resonate with me. You get me because I started this digital agency you know, vagabond kind of person, you know, curious. Um, So let's get right into it. I wanted to ask, um, tell us the listeners about how you got into GreenPal and maybe your backstory. Um, And you can go as far back as you would like and share um, what got you started, motivated to start your own company. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, today I'm the co-founder and CEO of GreenPal. Like you said, it is the mobile app that works like the Uber for lawn care. So if you're a homeowner, you need to get your grass cut rather than calling around on Craigslist or Yelp or Facebook. You can just download our app. Somebody comes out and takes care of the lawn mowing for you. We are an eight year overnight success. My two co-founders and I have been at the business for almost a decade. And uh, the first few years were really, really tough getting this business going, but here we are eight years in and we've got several hundred thousand people using the app to get their lawn mowed, doing multiple eight figures a year in revenue. And uh, it started off very humbly and very small, but we kind of stuck it out and got the marketplace going. And, and now we've got a good profitable business. We haven't raised any outside capital either. So we're, we're self-funded and, and bootstrapped, which is kind of rare for, for local marketplaces like ours. Um, but before GreenPal, I actually had a, a landscaping company. I started mowing grass in high school as a way to make extra cash. I was actually forced into the business by my father who said, get off your butt. I got a gig for you to do. You're going to go mow the neighbor's yard. Luckily, he made me go cut the neighbor's grass because uh, something about just making 20 bucks for an hour's work stuck with me. And so I just kept kept at that business all through high school, all through college and over a 15 year period of time, built that little lawn mowing business into one of the largest landscaping companies in the state of Tennessee. And I got it over 150 employees, uh, over 10 million a year in revenue. And in 2013, that business was acquired by one of the largest landscaping companies in the United States. So growing that first company in the lawn mowing business, just me and a push mower, like me and 90 trucks, uh, and learning how to do that from scratch along the way, just, just through trial and error, I, I learned kind of the hard way of how to build a business. And then after I sold it, I retired uh, and I got bored and I thought, OK, well, now, uh, now I want to do something easier. I want to do a, I want to do a tech startup. And and I guess it was kind of naivete as an asset. Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> Luckily, I, I was naive because <laughs> if I known how hard it was going to be, I never would have done it. But uh, but yeah. And so that's 22 years in one industry. I've never had a job. I've always worked for myself and uh, seen this seen the lawn care business from every every angle you can see it from. That's amazing. Well, that's your expertise, right? That's your real host. 22 years of doing something so well, you know, the ins and outs of every facet, right? From the products, the people, the clients, the questions, the objections, the pricing, you know it. And that's what I mean, becoming an expert in whatever profession, ever niche or ever thing that you're in, just know it inside out. So I love hearing that. Um, I, I agree. I, th- I think it can be, be helpful to solve your own problem too. Um, you know, like when I started GreenPal, I was kind of solving my own problem. I had spent 15 years in the lawn business. So then I, I kind of had the ability to approach it and understand, okay, this is how you build that, the mobile app to make it run smoother. This is how you build the Uber for lawn care. I see a lot of folks, uh, you know, try to try to start a business or try or, or try to innovate uh, in, a, in, a, in an industry they have no no real experience in. And so it's like, well, let's take two or three years and and maybe start and maybe work in that industry and then and then um, emerge into it. Like I saw an interview the other day with a guy who's a CEO of a company called Slice, which is a uh, which is like a, 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 a marketplace for pizzerias, small pizzerias. And he worked in a pizzeria for like two or three years before he started Slice. So I think I think that can be helpful. I think it'd be helpful to be solving your own problem and spend time in an industry kind of like I did. No, that's amazing. I wanted to ask, even prior to starting this business, um, I know you mentioned your dad pushed you into, you know, getting kind of a job and 
doing something, right? Instead of hanging out with the friends and playing sports or whatever it was. Um, were your parents entrepreneurial themselves? Like, did you have mentors? Did you have people that pushed you to start this on your own? That's a, that's a great question. Um, first entrepreneur in my family ever. And uh, for me, for my dad, it was less um, like, hey, go start a business and more get off your butt. And uh, cause I was, I, what I, I was actually playing Nintendo. I was playing super Mario brothers uh, or maybe super Mario Kart. come to think of it. And uh, he said, get off your ass. You're, you're going to go mow the neighbor's grass. And so, uh, so, so it was more like, more or less like my dad was like, you're going to, you're going to earn your keep. You're going to learn the value of hard work. And luckily he did that for me because no telling how my life would have turned out differently had he not. Um, and then for me, like one other beneficial thing uh, about starting a lawn mowing business um, was that I was working for a lot of wealthy clientele. So at a very young age, I was exposed to people who own businesses, to people who were doctors, lawyers, CPAs, you, you name it, who, people who could afford lawn care services. Like at a young age, they were my clients. And so I, I always like admired them and like was, 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 was serving them in, in like these beautiful homes. And like, I thought to myself, that's going to be me one day. And I'm going to, I'm going to live in this very neighborhood that I'm cutting grass in. And I made a goal to, to move into the neighborhood that I was mowing yards in by the age of 30. And I was able to do that. And I did it all just in the landscaping business. So I think there's correlation, like there's like correlation between the late, least sexy and alluring your idea, the better your chances of success. Because the, the ideas that the, and the businesses that aren't very sexy and aren't very, uh, you know, appealing to go into a lot of times are the ones that aren't as competitive and that, and that not everybody's looking at. Exactly. So the blue collar work hard, grind it out kind of businesses are the ones that a lot of people don't want to do. So there's a lot right. more need. There's a lot easier barriers to entry, but also tons of opportunity for you to actually make a difference. Right. So you exactly in your early age was able to vision you know, have a vision in terms of goals and have a mindset to shift, say, I want to be like them. So that's amazing to hear. Um, exactly. Ever... The, bi and, and the business yeah. can be your vehicle to that kind of stuff. Um, for me, that way I've look, looked at like the last 22 years of business is that my business, my business then and now was like the vehicle for like me to level up in life or the vehicle from, for, for me to achieve prosperity, for, the vehicle to me to, for me to make something of myself and that I could like pour my soul into, pour my life's energy into, and, and it kind of take me places I never would have gone. And also me personally evolve. Like if you're doing business correctly, every three or four years, you should evolve into a completely new person because the business is going to require things of you. It's gonna require you to read all of these books that you have back here. It's gonna require you to become a better leader, better manager. Uh, for me, like when I started GreenPal, I had to learn how to code. I had to learn how to build software. I never in a million years would have watched a tutorial on YouTube on how to write software, but I did for like three years because I had to, because the business required that of me. So that's one of the cool things. Like it, it, it extracts these things from you that you otherwise may not have ever done in your, done with your life because the marketplace requires that of you. But that also means different people, different folks, like we're wired differently as entrepreneurs because we know that what it takes is time, growth, right. learning, and commitment, right? And it's right. that daily habit of getting better, right? Not exactly. everyone's willing to do, put in the time effort because they see a social post or a YouTube video saying they can make hundreds or millions of dollars like that. But yeah. how much time yeah. and effort There's no one move really on the chessboard that wins the game. <laughs> that's, that's right. All that time, right, that you committed early days, making $20 an hour, to then eventually making a hundred and maybe a thousand dollars an hour. It took years to harvest these foundations of building a team, understanding client demands, pricing it well, taking care of your customers, you know, equipping them with insurance and all this stuff. It's not right. an overnight success because it takes years to develop these systems, processes, the foundation. So I love hearing that you started from, you know, just hard work, really. Yeah, and, and I think a superpower can consistency. Like if 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 you, if I had one superpower, it's 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 consistency day in, day out, doing the small things over and over again for a long period of time. 
because those things do build up and, and everything that is big starts very small. Like entrepreneurship's full of all of these like dichotomies, like things that you have to hold in your head that, that don't necessarily like add up. And one of them is you have to have this huge, like audacious goal, like this big vision. And that could be, you want to have a million dollar business or a $10 million business or a billion dollar business, whatever it is, big goal. But you also have to think and act very, very small and, 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 and execute at a small level for a very long period of time. And so like, so which is it? Is it like do the small stuff, do these little small things, or is it make big moves? It's really both. And, and I, I think like business teaches you the, the, how compound interest works and how like all of these things add up over time. And, and like, it's almost like a snowball. And, and next thing, you know, five, 10 years goes by and you actually have something. So it, 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 like to your point, yeah, it's, it's, there is no overnight success, but like, I mean, very, 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 very rarely. And even when you do see one that is an overnight success, what you don't realize is a lot of times that founder has crashed and burned on two or three other things before they started that thing. And so it, you're not really looking at one or two years. You're really looking at like most times five, 10 or 15 years because they've already tried and failed on two or three other ventures. And they took all of those learnings and put them into the one that looked like an overnight success. That's amazing. I, I love hearing how you mentioned and said that because just like sports athletes, you know, NBA, football, soccer stars, yes, they hit the peak at 25, 30, but no one talks about those 20 years of right. all 14 hour days, eating well, coaches, training, commitment, right. sacrifice, you know, but they see that MVP, all-star or whatever. And they're like, I want to be like them. But no one's willing to put in that time and effort and work, right? And exactly. Yes, there's a skill. Yes, they're like peak performance. There's one in millions of them that can hit that specific, you know, goal. But it's like business ownership. You don't have to be an all-star winning a championship. You can just make it to the NBA. It's like entrepreneurship. If you make it after 10 years, that's a success in its own right. Yeah. Because not a lot that, of them can even meet. That is the NFL. And like that, the thing is, is like, we all have access to this. Like, I like, yeah, I mean, athletes are, are gifted. They, they're born with a talent, like professional athletes. But as entrepreneurs, we all can get in the game. And like to, to use the analogy one, to like extract it one layer forward. Uh, I, I read an article, uh, this, this coach was interviewing Kobe Bryant. And he said, I just want to watch you practice. I, I just want to sit and observe and watch you practice, see what you do to be Kobe. And so he watches Kobe Bryant practice for like an hour. And like Kobe is doing like the, e like the easiest layups over and over and over again. He's shooting free throws over and over and over again. Like he's, it's just the fundamentals, the same stuff that like high school kids do. And he literally just did the fundamentals over and over for an hour straight. Like he's not doing 360 slam dunks and, and all of these things. Like he's literally just doing the fundamentals. And, and I think like that's the key to success is the fundamentals consistently is, is how you achieve greatness. And, and I, you know, like these are fundamental principles of the universe that apply to pretty much everything in life. So this is interesting that you mentioned that because I truly believe very similar to you, it's consistent daily activities with those similar habits, right? Right. But a lot of people are always looking for growth hacks, fastest ways to scale. There's a magical pill out there, trick <laughs> yeah. to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers with one click of the button, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, what would you say to those people? Because they're not in the game. They don't really understand business ownership, how long it takes, how hard it is to actually run a business, let alone like click on a social ad that guarantees a millionaire in a month. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, until you get into the game and you start to see it for yourself, because we all want to like be seduced by that. We all like it a lot. I get a lot of people ask me like, well, I don't, I, I want to start a business because I hate my job and I work my butt off at my job and, and I don't want to work that hard anymore. And I want your life. Like, that's what they tell me. Like, I want to travel like you and I, I, and I want to, I want your life. So I want to start a business because it will be an easier life. And the reality is, is not, it's, it's, no, it's not. You're going to work 10 times harder for half the money for like a long time because you, your business is going to require all, all the extra cash that you can make and put back into it. And, and so it, it takes a long time, 
but at least you have ownership in it and it's your thing. And it can almost be like your expression, like into life in general, like it can be an extension of you and it can be your baby. And like, to me, that's invaluable. And it does, it, it, it takes a long time to get these things going. And, and there is no one move on the chessboard that wins the game. And there really isn't any shortcuts. Yeah, you can work efficiently and smarter and leverage. You can like, there's, you don't leap, you leverage. Like you can leverage uh, outsourcing, delegation, uh, you know, investing in yourself, learning skills. Like there's all these sorts of things you can do to leverage to get there, but there is no shortcut. There is no, there is no one, one way to like growth hack your way to success. It's, it's a lot of little things done day in, day out for a long time. Definitely. So a couple of questions I want to ask you. Um, did you ever uh, hire like coaches, mentors throughout this business journey of yours from your previous company to this company? So one of my favorite quotes is from Mark Cuban. He says, never take advice from somebody who hasn't done or is doing what it is you want to do. So that's like a trap a lot of people fall into is that they'll pay these online coaches or they'll pay, you know, these, these mentors or consultants and they never done anything. They never built a business. They never, hell, they never made any money in their life. How are they going to teach you how to make money? And so, so like that's step one in my book, it's, it's never really seek counsel from somebody who, who hasn't done what it is you're trying to do. So that's step one for me, you know, I, I, I my co-founders and I built a consumer mobile app in Nashville, Tennessee. I don't like, I don't believe there's any other consumer facing tech company to come out of Nashville. Now Nashville is known for country music. We've got a good healthcare industry. We've got, we've, we've, we've got a good automobile industry. We, we got a lot of good industries in Nashville, but consumer internet is not one of them. So, so the first thing I did, is like, I was trying to find like mentors and stuff, people to coach me on how to build a mobile app. And I couldn't find anybody who's done what it is I was trying to do. So I, I, I quickly thought, okay, well, this is a waste of my time. And so what I started doing was I, I went to YouTube University. I literally, I, I literally sought out every single entrepreneur I could online to learn from them. And so I have probably a hundred mentors. Most of them have never met me, but over the years, they, that, they have guided me and mentored me to, so, so I can learn from them and learn how they did what they did. And so, so one guy, like, like a guy like Andrew Chen, uh, got another guy named Casey Winters, um, another guy named uh, Brian Bedford. Um, like these, these guys are like, they were growth leads at fast growing tech startups and so they talk, they talk about how they do things like SEO, how content, uh, how they do st uh, A-B testing, how they think about uh, ways to achieve growth with their businesses. And like, these are guys that nobody's ever heard of, like 99.9% .9 of people never heard of them, but they are the people who are doing what it is that I want to do. So that's who I learned from. And, and over a decade, you know, I've consumed everything that, that probably 50 people have put out. And some of them do have some premium courses like uh, uh, Brian Dean, for example, um, you know, I've bought his premium course and it was worth every penny. So sometimes I will, I will put down for the premium course or the premium coaching, but in most cases, 90% of what I've learned has just been passively, asynchronously from people who are, are writing blog posts, doing video interviews, talking at conferences, and it's all free. What a great, what a time to be alive. What a time to start a business. So that's a great advice, Brian, by the way. Um, but you're someone that seeks out information and you're actually going to consume it and take action. A lot of people are very passive and they don't even know that, you know, for you to then grow and scale and then sell your business and you know what it takes to then start your own company, to then understand that there's people that have already gone through certain things and you just want to use them, their knowledge, insight, skill set and gain and absorb as much as you can from them to utilize it for your own purpose, for your own business, right? That's a skill set on its own, right? Like a lot of people don't even think that way. And because you've already built a, a business that Strive and got sold, you think differently than the newbie kind of entrepreneurs that don't get it yet. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like the marketplace is, the marketplace is uh, an unrelenting purveyor of feedback. And so the marketplace is always going to tell you where you suck. It's always going to tell you where you got to improve. It's always going to tell you what, what you have to level up. And if you want to play the game, you're going to have to, you're going to have to seek out the knowledge and apply it. Um, 
for me, one of the one of the big unlocks in 20 years of business was that when I realized that I could pretty much learn anything I had to learn, if I if I was if I was uh, sufficiently motivated, I could learn the I could learn how, how to do enough uh, statistical analysis. I could learn how to do enough coding. I could learn how to do enough. Uh, uh, un, uh, product design, enough Photoshop. I could learn how to do just enough to, to be able to build a team around me. And, and once I learned that I could pretty much learn anything I had to do, that was a big unlock for me. And, and, a, and a, a quote from Mark Zuckerberg that, that I like is, he says, you know, you don't want to be a know-it-all, you want to be a learn-it-all. And so like, you look at Mark Zuckerberg, probably youngest CEO in history to run a billion dollar business. Um, and, and, pro- and I think probably at the age of 21, 22 was running a multi, multi-billion dollar inter- in business. This dude sought out as much knowledge as he could and he was a sponge. And, and he literally learned as much as he could and, and was able to, to run the, one of the biggest businesses in the world at such a young age. So I think business t- like teaches you that, that you can, if you're motivated enough, you can seek out and learn whatever it is you gotta learn to, to be successful. And that's one of the cool things about it. And it forces you to do that. Um, you know, I'm not the most motivated dude, like without the business, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this stuff, but the business requires it of me. And that's one of the things I love about it. So let's go back to when you retired for the first time after you exited your first business. Um, how long did you retire and what got your bug back into like doing the startup? Yeah, it's, it's, it was a growth period for me because I, I took some time off. And I really thought that was it. I was just going to invest my money and, and travel. And I think it, like it hit me like I was in Costa Rica. And the, the biggest problem I had faced that week was the bar ran out of my favorite type of tequila. And I thought, wow, I am wired to be able to solve bigger problems of this. I, I am wired to do more and be more in life. I, and so I thought, and, and the other thing was like, there was something missing. Like, you, you know, I don't think follow your passion is good advice because I've never been I've never been passionate about grass cutting, but I think your business can be the purpose, your life's purpose. And for me, my business has always been the purpose behind what it is I'm doing. So whether it be like being a good steward of my employees or my stakeholders or, or building a good product for my customers to get value from, like that's important to me. That's why I get out of bed in the morning and the business is the purpose for why I'm doing what I'm doing. And when I sold the company, I didn't have that anymore. So it was almost like a, like a melancholy, like there was something missing. And, uh, and so it was like, okay, I need, I need to be able to throw my creative energy and my life force into a new project. And so the idea for Green Pal was a pretty straightforward one because I was kind of solving my own problem. Um, am I going to sit here and tell you I love the grind, love the slog, love starting a business from scratch? Hell no, it sucks. Um, it sucks bad. But, but for me, it's like I love the success. I love the progress. I love creating the opportunities. I love seeing it, my baby grow up. It, it just, it's a lot of fun. Like, uh, 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 I think Ernest Hemingway said, Ernest Hemingway said, I hate writing, but I love having written. And for me, that's like business. I hate starting a business from scratch, but I love having the business grow and see it succeed. So that, that, that's what it means to me. I think that's ultimately what everyone's after, right? Running their own kind of version of whatever the business is. But a lot of people get caught up with like VC startup money and a lot of the Silicon Valley, they, there's all these shows and the whole, yeah. you know, gamification of like million dollar, billion dollar, you know, back businesses. The reality is those million dollar businesses or even a couple hundred thousand dollar businesses, easier to achieve, gets you moving, growing, learning. And that success could be a stepping stone to your next venture. So you don't have to go huge, right? And this is where a lot of people get you know, totally agree. Up, right. So I started this agency. Tot- totally agree. Yeah. Like I started this agency not knowing anything about business either, bootstrapped everything, but it's like my baby, right? Like you grow it, you have a team, you enjoy it, you help them develop as a leader, you build systems, processes, learning. And that's why you own it. You, you enjoy it more because you have some sort of success and therefore you're taking it to that next level when if you exit or not or you continue doing what you love i agree i agree 100 you literally read my mind it's like a lot of people um they they want to like 
swing for the fences and do the hundred million billion dollar company when they've never they never ran a lemonade stand like like literally like li literally like start the small business cut your teeth on that it could be hell it could be a home cleaning service it could be a lawn mowing service like i had it could be a construction company it could be a marketing agency you could do you could do anything you want but start a small business that that takes no money and cut your teeth on business ownership get a track record maybe put a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollars in the bank then do the big one it's like like baby step your way and hit a single or a double then then try to hit the grand slam and I think a lot of people, like a lot of people tell me is, is when I'm doing coaching and mentoring, uh, I do that as a hobby in Nashville. A lot of people say, well, I can't start my business. I can't like you because I don't have access to capital. Nobody will give me any money. Yeah. Well, listen, this $10 million idea you want to start that you need like $5 million for, let's, 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 get, let's get a small business going for a few years and let's get some money in the bank. Then we can do that big one. So I, lo I love how you put that. It's like, it's like no, like, like ease into it with, with something approachable, get a track record, then go after the big idea. But not everyone's cut out for business ownership, entrepreneurship as well. And they have to realize and acknowledge it because if they're frustrated, stressed, and they're not feeling right? Like it's not for them. They get up miserable every single day. Yes, it's the grind, but how long can they endure the grind? So it also depends on your situation, your life situation. You have a family, you have obligations, you're, you know, you're caring for elderly families in different regions of the world as well. So understand that it may be climbing, you know, someone in their twenties might not be able to start something until they're 30 or 40 when they have right. everything in order. Right. Like, you know, don't force things. And like you also mentioned, like starting small. Right. Like that means just like if you're getting a job, any career, right, professional career, it doesn't just happen that you're now, you know, the highest position as a CEO of a, as a company. You move up from That's the right. janitor to part time to full time customer service and you move up. <laughs> so it's the same exactly. thing as business ownership. You don't just jump in and say, look, I want to manage a five or $10 million company without even starting from the ground up. Exactly. And, and it's like, when was the, when was the best time to, to plant an oak tree, you know, 20 years ago, the second best time is today. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's like, in, in another, th and, uh, one of my favorite, uh, success coaches of all time, a guy named Jim Rohn, who was the predecessor to, he was a Tony Robbins before Tony Robbins. And one thing Jim Rohn says is, is that five years from now, you will arrive. The only question is where? And, and the business can be the answer to that question. If you start today, five years from now, you will arrive and the business will get you there. Uh, what you don't want to do is, is be in that same cubicle that you're sitting in today, you know, at the same job or, or maybe, maybe one level up with the same pay and the same crappy work schedule and the same two weeks a year. Like, no, like five years from now, you don't want to be there. You want to be somewhere else. Let the business be the vehicle to get you there. Um, but on the other hand, like, you know, I'm saying it's like, yeah, get in the game. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like encourage people to, 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 to start their own business. But on the other hand, uh, Mark Cuban says, you know, if you have to ask, the answer is probably no. Like, if you have to ask, should I be an entrepreneur? The answer is probably no. Because, because if you are an entrepreneur, you're already working on it nights and weekends. You're already working on it Sunday. You're already thinking about it when you hit you, when you're in the shower in the morning, you're already like staying up till 1 AM, uh, like working on whatever it is. You just already are doing that. Nobody can talk you out of it. So on the one hand, yes, anybody can do it. But on the other hand, you like, if you are an entrepreneur, you, you, you're kind of like by default taking action on, on the idea. So like literally hold yourself accountable to like understand the, the difference. Totally agree. I mean, it's weird, but you know, you and me, we're different because I take notes all the time. Throughout the day, middle of the night, I would wake up, jot things down because my, yeah. my mind's always thinking, right? And people think I'm crazy, but that's the reality. Yep. Because we think differently. We're always looking to grow. We're looking at different ideas, marketing tactics. And then we think of something and we're like, okay, we got to put that in writing and see when I can actually try it, right? And I nothing is going to be perfect. And yes, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's more about growing and learning and making mistakes, right? And That's evolving exactly right. the way. 
I agree. Yeah. Success is a lousy teacher. <laughs> exactly. So where, where do you see yourself? Like, I know you've been running this uh, company, Green Pal, for a while. Um, are, what's your plans? Like, what's your five, 10 year? Like, where do you see yourself, Ryan? Because I know you travel a lot. You have a lot of staff remotely. You have a fairly great company and, you know, client and software. Like, what's going on in your next future? Yeah, you know, we're, we're eight years in. <clears throat> and so in many ways, like it, you, you can look back, like we ended our first year uh, in 2013 with, with, with like 12 to 24 customers and half of them were my friends and family. Now we have several hundred thousand. So it's easy. You can look back and say, wow, look how far we've come. But it never feels that way. Like it, it, you all, it always feels like day one. And, and the interesting thing about business is that it's like it's almost like a video game and every level is a, is a new set of challenges, is a new final boss, and there's a new and there's a new interesting level. And like you don't want to play level three over and over again. You want you want to get to level nine, ten. And, and and so for me, you know, eight years in, what does the next five years look like? We've got so much further to go in terms of of being the default way people get their grass cut in the United States, like the Instacart or the DoorDash or the Postmates or Uber or Uber Eats. And so and we got a long way to go. To, to, so to use the Jeff Bezos quote, it's still it's still day one. It always feels like day one. So and, and actually, this business is starting now. It's fun to run like I'm having fun doing it. So I'm going to keep doing it as long as I'm having fun. And that's a great answer because it shows that that evolution, you putting in the time and effort that the grit perseverance early days and you're probably bleeding money putting a lot of time and effort in your yeah, we were. why am I doing what I'm doing when I just retired right yeah. you're like what did I think why right yeah and now you're actually enjoying it and that's where you know you've hit a good stride and you you're actually enjoying life right being able that's to right. Travel, do things that you love having great leadership team and people that you know you look forward to wanting to help and talk to and you know evolve and develop as well so I love hearing that. It's amazing, Brian. Give it, you know, give it five hard years. That's my advice. Five hard years. That's what it was for us to get the business going. And, you know, it was, it was $10 a day food budget. It was every dime we could get to put back in the business. My, my, my co-founder drove for, back in those days, you could make like $30 an hour driving for Uber. And so he would drive for Uber. He didn't know how to code. Um, but we figured out that we could hire good developers in Pakistan uh, for like $30 an hour. So he would drive for Uber and like every hour of driving time was an hour of developer time. And, and so, and so literally the money would come from that Uber account and it would go into the company bank account. And he's like, I can't code, but I can drive. And that's how we like breathe. We, we like got the business going from scratch by doing scrappy stuff like that for many years. But that's side hustle and that's entrepreneurial, right? And that's what, yep. that's how you think creatively and that's how you get through challenging times, right? You that's do right. what you have to do. If you <laughs> that, just buying stuff on, on GG and Craigslist and selling it at a markup, whatever do it what is, you got to do, whatever you do what your you service, do. your skill set is, go sell it. And hopefully that will help you get closer to your bigger goal. Right. That's that's right. I watched an interview with Rick Ross the other day and he said, you know, I got my start at a car wash and I and they wouldn't pay us anything, but we work for tips. And I would tell you, this is what Rick Ross said. He said, I would tell these people, listen, I'll go fill your car up. I'll clean it as good as I mean, I'll do whatever. If you say if you give me enough time, I'll organize your cassette tapes in alphabetical order. He's like, you do what I, you do, whatever it is you got to do. And, and you, you literally scrimp by and make as much money as you can and put that money back to work. Do that over and over again, and you, you'll get a snowball effect going. But if exactly. Rick Ross, I mean, Rick Ross, I mean, come on, I'll organize your cassette tapes, is what he said. <laughs> but that's what it takes, right? Entrepreneurials have yeah. something different in them that 99% of the population doesn't have. And that's, that's right. what it takes, right? To be uh, overnight success after 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it's exactly right and but you don't want to do the same you don't want to be organizing the cassette tapes for for 10 years in a row but be willing to do that for a few years to get get the ball rolling that that's my point point. and a lot of times people will get seduced by the grind and the hustle and they get stuck in that like hold yourself accountable to little goals little goals and, and make sure those goals grow 
knock them down. Um, so it's, it's the hustle, it's the grind, but it's also that you gotta, like, you gotta measure the progress. You gotta do both. And if you're willing to do both, you, you know, what a, what a great time to be alive. Cause you, you know, you can literally chart your way through life by with, with your business. I know That's it's, amazing. I know I have. That's amazing. So outside of Mexico, is there any other great destinations that you're planning on traveling to? You know, I want to get to Europe. Uh, I want to get to Greece. I want to get to Spain, but but they're not, still not letting anybody in. Um, so I've been down in Latin America quite a bit. I uh, love, 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 love Colombia, love, love Mexico, love Argentina. And so I speak pretty decent Spanish. So that's, that's what's and the internet's great down here. So I, you know, anywhere with an internet connection, I can do what I got to do. And I literally only put in probably three or four hard hours a day, maybe sometimes as little as two. Um, and, but I, anybody listening to this, I don't want, I don't want you to think that you can like do that in the early days, <laughs> like, like, like the early days where it's like very much seven days a week, very much like 12 hour days, 13 hour days. Um, but, but once we got some momentum going, I, I was able to pull back and kind of enjoy the ride a little bit better. That's amazing to hear. I mean, it's already an eight year overnight success in this company. <laughs> Um, and now you're finally having the freedom to kind of enjoy it. And, you know, that's what the whole purpose of life is, right? Like right. spend time doing things that you love, that you're passionate with and grow along the way, right? Yes, you're going to make right. mistakes. Yes, you're going to, you know, find struggle, but it's how you endure that struggle, how you move along and progress, right? And exactly. find interesting people along the way and learn and grasp and self-educate like what you did. And I absorb a lot of content this way. Um, but have fun. And it seems like you're loving it. So I, I love, you know, that whole persona of what you are living, Brian. So definitely if you're ever in Toronto, give me a holler because we'll, we'll for sure hang on. Absolutely, John. I would love that. Um, so how can the listeners either reach out to you, check you out, or contact you? Yeah, anybody in the United States that doesn't want to mow your, mow your own yard, just download Green Pal in the App Store or Play Store. You'll get hooked up with a good lawn mowing service in less than a minute. Uh, anybody want to hit me up? I spend most of my time on Instagram, so you can follow me, uh, shoot me a DM at Brian M. Clayton. Awesome. Well, I'll, shoot, I'll share that in the show notes. Brian, thanks a lot. I really appreciate your time. I know you're probably on vacation sun, sand, beach, water, but um, I know you're committing a lot of time here. So I do uh, want to thank you. I'm ultra grateful for that. And for sure, if you're ever in Canada, hit me up. Thanks a lot, Brian. Awesome, John. Thanks for having me on the show.